Hello everyone and welcome to my 7th video. So today's video will be on stresses on beams and the interesting feature of the high beam. So as you can see today I am uh, tasked with the uh, repairing of this bridge here and uh, I'll try to insert a video here on the effect of stresses on the bridge. So as you have seen from the video, uh, there is a lot of stress on the wave bridge and this has caused uh, a failure of the beam. So if you can come here, I'll show you how this beam has cracked here. So this is uh, due to uh, the lack of thickness on the beam. And uh, as uh, all of us know that uh, it is easier to break a thicker stick than a smaller stick. So I'll just try to show this by toothpick. And if you can imagine that this is the beam here, it's easier to break a toothpick like that with a thicker one. If I use this one here, double length, it's much harder to break that. So the same principle lies here. So this beam here, as you can see, this measures 8 inches. Alright, this measures 8, 8 inches. So we're going to increase the length of this one, the thickness of this. So this is the new beam here. And if you see the length of this, this is 12 inches or 1 feet. So this is the principle here where we are using to um, offset the uh, effects of the stresses of the uh, load here. So that is one thing increasing the load but you will also have to take into account the weight of the material itself which adds to its own weight and also the economics of the uh, material also. So if you'll notice here, the beam, this is in the shape of an eye beam, if, you, if the camera can go a bit back, you can see this is the shape of an eye. Alright, so why is the shape of an eye? This is an interesting feature here. I'll try to show an example with uh, my packed sausage lunch here. So this is sausage here and then I'll use, you can imagine that this is a beam here. I'll insert some toothpicks here just for clarity, just to understand the stresses of beams here. All right. All right. So if this is the beam which we're having, and the vehicle goes over it, it undergoes stresses, and this is bending stresses. Now, if you see the top part here, this has become closer. The, the head of the toothpicks. This is known as compression stress, and the lower part is a bit stretched out. This is known as tension stress. So these two stresses are there in the beam and the middle portion here, also known as the neutral axis, there is little or no stress here. So what happens here is that as we can understand now from the compression stress and the tension stress, we need more materials on the edges here, which is also known as the flanges of the beam. Alright, so if you can see here, these are known as the flanges of the beam and this is known as the web. So this is why uh, this the I-beam is uh, usually very much used for such loads and it's very good for bending stress but not so much for torsion. So I hope you have understood a bit on the examples of the bending stresses and the I-beam also. It's a very simple uh, explanation so I hope you have understood and uh, also thinking of the way back home and then talking about stresses I'm getting a bit stressed also. It's a long six journey drive back, bumpy dusty road. So I think I'm going to have this later and also today is Christmas Eve and uh, I think by the time I get network and I'll be able to upload this video, it'll be Christmas Day. So wishing all the viewers a very Merry Christmas also. Thank you and keep watching my videos.